Good evening, I'm Connie Chung, sitting in tonight for Dan Rather. In California today, insurance officials claim they've taken the air out of one of the costliest rackets going. Staged, fraudulent, and sometimes fatal car wrecks. Sidney Kennard has the story. The four men arrested this morning are said to have become millionaires by staging phony accidents, then filing false insurance claims. Two of those caught in the undercover operation are lawyers. We have pierced the top echelon of a staged auto accident ring, a ring that cost insurance companies tens of millions of dollars. And Officials said one of the men arrested with the attorneys may have staged more than 600 accidents himself. Often they were scripted in advance. Investigators say they have recovered hundreds of such drawings. He's saying he's going to hit me. No, 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 no. You, hit him. you hit him. Here, a hidden camera shows a staged minor rear end accident. Then, unhappy with the first collision, they do it again, later filing five bodily injury claims. In this case, one of the cars was driven by an undercover agent, and the suspects went to prison. This is just about as profitable as dealing drugs in a heck of a lot less dangerous. That's not always true. Some of the staged accidents have taken a different twist, like this one where the suspect was killed when he slammed on his brakes in front of a truck. Two books, including a bestseller, have recently been written on the subject, one of them a true story in which a grieving mother claims her daughter was murdered when she was about to go to the police. It's estimated up to 50 cents on each dollar being paid out on insurance claims in California cover fraud. And consumers are bearing the brunt, being charged some of the highest insurance rates in the country. Cindy Kennard, CBS News, Los Angeles. lose a precious child to murder. The last thing they expect is to have to battle with the police over who the killer was. But that's exactly what happened to mystery writer Lois Duncan. Duncan wrote about her real life ordeal in her book, Who Killed My Daughter? And eight years after her daughter's death, that question still hasn't been answered. All I could think of in the beginning was just, there was my child and I was losing her. I didn't even ask myself who did this. What mattered was I was losing my baby. Losing her youngest child, 19-year-old Caitlin, is a horror mystery writer Lois Duncan Arquette and her husband Donald have lived with for nearly eight years. That Kate was murdered in a bloody shooting that has never been solved is a real-life mystery haunting the Arquette family and the Albuquerque, New Mexico Police Department to this day. Pat Caristo is a private detective who works for the Arquette family. This is where Kate was shot. The police estimate her car traveling 40 miles an hour continued across the intersection, jumped the median, and came to rest against a uh, light pole 700 feet away. Kate Arquette died from two bullet wounds to her head. She was shot alone in her car on the evening of July 16, 1989. Police call it a random drive-by shooting. The idea that someone might deliberately have shot her, what was past belief to us, and then, then things began to happen that led us into that next step. That next step caused Lois to set out on a heartbreaking investigation that would reveal her daughter's darkest secrets and pit Lois against the Albuquerque Police Department. It centers on just who killed Kate and why. A search that Lois says begins with Kate and her live-in Vietnamese boyfriend, Yung Nguyen. Kate and Yung were having some major problems. Things were happening in her life that she was not discussing with us but we could see what the results of them were, that she was a very unhappy young woman at that point. Most knew her as an ambitious young woman with the dream of a medical career, but there was another side to Kate. The day after her death, another daughter told Lois that Kate had taken part in a scam to collect auto insurance, allegedly along with her boyfriend and several other Vietnamese. He had rented a car. He had deliberately run into a car filled with other Vietnamese uh, participants, uh, they had claimed soft tissue injuries and he had been paid for it and come home. Lois gave police a copy of the check for $1,500 deposited in Kate's bank account, which she says is the payoff for Kate and Jung's participation in the scam. I believe that Kate knew just a little bit more than she should have known 
and I believe that she was killed because of that knowledge. This is big enough money to kill somebody over. Absolutely. People have been killed for far less than that. Absolutely. Although police records show that Jung admitted to a minor role in the insurance scam, no one we've talked to, including the Arquettes, believes Jung Nguyen was involved in the murder. But some theorize that once Kate tried to end her relationship with Jung, she became a threat to the people who allegedly ran the multi-million dollar auto scams. From two days after Kate was dead, the Albuquerque Police Department was getting information from very reputable sources, Kate's psychiatrist that Kate was concerned about illegal activities. Pat Caristo and other critics say police seemed determined not to follow the evidence about the alleged Vietnamese connection. Evidence like this copy of Kate's final telephone bill, showing calls made from her apartment minutes after her death. Calls later found out to have been made to the Vietnamese capper, the term used for the boss in the alleged auto wrecking scam. I said, I think these are very important. Let's find out who was called out there and informed of Kate's death. And the officer in charge of the case said, um, no, that's not necessary. The Vietnamese have nothing to do with this. Do you buy that this was a random drive-by shooting? Absolutely not. That, that's, that's, that's absolutely insane. It did not involve anything as complex as a conspiracy by the Vietnamese connection. It involved a dare by four individuals in a car that uh, became involved in shooting innocently, randomly, Caitlin Marquette to death on the streets of Albuquerque. That's what this case is about. Police insist that Kate was killed by four young Hispanic men in a random drive-by shooting. Arrests were made six months after her death. But the case fell apart when witnesses changed their stories and the district attorney dropped the charges. It was investigator 101 not being done. The Arquettes say the police have ignored important clues, like this affectionate note that Jung claims Kate left him on the night she was shot. When the Arquettes saw the note for the first time nearly a year after the murder, they were shocked. Simple words are misspelled, and the note appears to be written in broken English. The note was not in Kate's handwriting, and we informed them of that and gave them a sample of Kate's handwriting so they could compare it themselves. They never spoke to us again. Police won't say why the note was never examined by handwriting experts, and they insist that their investigation was thorough. Yet their official report shows no Vietnamese names listed as witnesses. In pursuit of the so-called Vietnamese connection, only Jung Nguyen and two other Vietnamese men were interviewed by police, and all three allegedly took part in the auto wrecking scam. Bob Schwartz is the former district attorney. Well, I would categorize a police investigation as good. Uh, as competent, as thorough, and I would characterize it as they followed the trails that they were offered to them and followed them as far as they could. Even though he dropped the charges against the Hispanic men, Schwartz now says he also believes they did kill Caitlin Arquette. Nevertheless, in 1991, when he dismissed the case against them, Schwartz told reporters that new evidence suggested police should investigate the Vietnamese connection. Unfortunately, um, Caitlin's parents, like many parents in this country, may have to live a very restless life because we may never be able to prove who killed their daughter. I don't want Kate to be so unimportant that people can shrug it off and say, oh well, she's gone, so what? I want to find out what happened. I want to give Kate an ending. And Lois Arquette vows she will spend the rest of her life trying to find Kate's killer.